I have been trying to get that song out of my head since 1987. <laughs> really, why did you put it back? Because it was True, but now I'm dealing with all of the traumas from that year. It wasn't a great year. I mean, really, between that song and Robocop, there wasn't much left. <laughs> that's, that's what I've got to work with, man. <laughs> I mean, and I remember some of these things vividly. I mean, huh? no, it's the time travel. Okay, new, new people, you gotta understand, I, I, have, I have admitted to this before, you can, you can actually go back in time on YouTube, and you can see that I've admitted to being one of three time travelers of the open stage. The first one being Doc Taylor in his fabulous blue box. The third one being the lovely and also musical Darwin Prophet. And then there's this schmuck in the middle on the stage. And yeah! Yay, courtesy cheers! <laughs> and, the, you know, the truth is, if you, if you ask, you know, if you ask, well, technically I was here before Doc Taylor, but Doc Taylor revealed that he was a time traveler second. And Darwin, on her time ship, now has... Tim Stevens, who was our original videographer, so the only way that would have worked would have been her knowing about this place first. So she might be the first. Anyway, we're, we'll try to clear it up at some point. The important thing to realize is I'm one of the time travelers of the open stage. Get that in your head before the fourth one shows up because otherwise it'll get very confusing. Good, good. Right, right, careful, we'll get sued. Moving on, Alonzi, moving on. BBC's like, is he going there? Is he going there? The, the point of this is, I, I know that we bicker and we argue us time travelers about which one of us came first, who, who was there, who helped Napoleon with his indigestion, all of these things. But there's one thing we all agree on. We love, and I mean love, love, love a good prophecy. You know, because if you meet a seer, a prophet, an oracle, one of these people who, who knows the future, If you know one of these people who knows the future, you've got one of three things on your hands. You either have an idiot or a charlatan. There's a slash in that. You have a time traveler trying to impress the locals for free booze. We like that too. Or three, you might actually be dealing with the genuine article. Someone who can crack through the space-time barrier. I don't get the weird noise this time. That's kind of a bummer. Oh, that, thank you for that. Kurt, oh, that, wait, let's get it. Excellent, excellent. So, <laughs> yay props department. Yeah, the power of Foley. The thing, <laughs> wait, he'll get it back any time now. Just funny because it's a story about time travel. So, the thing about you're really just hoping I crash and burn, don't you? You're, I see the smile he's going. He's going to just, he's going. He's going, I'm coming back. We're just right near them. Back away. The point is all of this is on my mind, the whole time travel thing, because somebody said something awful to me. You gotta understand, from your point of view, I'm about to turn 40, uh, about a, a little over a week. Don't cheer, don't cheer, don't cheer. And somebody said, well, you've got about 10 good years left in you. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, somebody actually said that to me. Uh, we're not gonna say who. No. Nobody here, I don't think. But the point being, this has been on my mind. So I, I've been thinking about the past, and, and one of the great stories from 1987 comes to mind. And I met a psychic. I actually met a psychic. Her real name, of course, has been shrouded in mystery, but she had a, a name you can actually look up online, her uh, nom de plume, if you will. Was, and I love this, and I wish I made this up. I wish I was lying to you right now because this is such a great gag that I didn't come up with. But she was published under the name Medium Rare. 
And at that point, I have to be telling you the honest truth because there's no way I, I would totally take credit for that, but I didn't. So she tells me, she says, you know, we're going to do your chart. You have to realize I'm, it's 1987, I'm a kid. I don't know anything. And she does this really complicated thing. and says, 39 is going to be a really weird year for you. It's your Saturn return and all of the, I don't know. And just then she shows me this like wild Cthulian glyph and says, you're doomed. <laughs> no, 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 no. It'll be really interesting. You know, the way a Chinese curse works. Okay, great. And I kind of blow this off until this year, which has been kind of Mr. Toad's wild ride. And then somebody walks up, just as it's starting to get really awesome again, because I had a rough year, somebody walked up to me and said, you've got about 10 good ones left in you. It's pretty much how I felt at the time. So I'm left with this problem. 10 good years. And then I remember, all time travelers know how to cheat death. Now, to be fair, it's not really cheating death. You can't ultimately cheat death. But you can buy yourself some time by being especially interesting. Doc Taylor's worked this out. BBC's got that whole recasting trick. Every couple of years, he gets a new dimple on his chin, and off he goes. <laughs> Darwin's been lovely for as long as I've known her, and all I can say is she's got a mirror and I'm not gonna ask a lot of questions. Now, I've got my own trick being a time traveler. I do not have a portrait of Dorian Gray in my closet, as many people have wondered. That would be useless. My name is Russ, not Dorian. But I figured out, really, Jay? Come on. I did figure out a way to trick the system. You see, I talked about a birthday. If you got one birthday, that's how old you are. Congratulations, you're done. But if you fool the universe with multiple birthdays, you get to average them together. So if you look at it one way, yeah, I'm 39, probably got 10 good years left. <laughs> or, well, we just had Creative Motion's anniversary. I joined them a few months later, which means in November I'll be five. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. And then on August 9th, mark the day, on August 9th, something I helped be a part of and gave birth to, the circus freaks are gonna turn two. So, if I was in trouble enough, I'm about to be a two-year-old. And then you average it all together and you realize I'm 15. And that explains everything. <laughs> and then it occurred to me, in 1987, I was 15 years old. I'll leave you to your own conclusions, but I will tell you this one surefire trick to staying young is to keep doing interesting and spectacularly weird things. One of them I greatly recommend is spending your Monday nights here at the open stage. Yeah.